Hello everyone. Um, so uh, here I'm performing a, a preperitoneal hernia repair on a patient with a bed large uh, incisional hernia, recurrent hernia actually. Uh, it's a hernial defect measures about uh, 20 by 8 uh, centimeters uh, in the region of uh, M2, M3 and M4 by AHS classification. So I decided to perform a preperitoneal hernia repair by uh, starting up high up in the cranial and uh, take, dividing the falciform uh, uh, initially. So I docked the patient uh, right side initially because uh, the patient had a previous history of uh, colostomy reversal on the left side so I have to fin uh, close that defect as well. So. I decided to dock on the patient uh, right side initially. So here I am uh, dropping down the falciform, developing the preperitoneal space uh, cranially, which is like a virgin plane. So I thought it will be easier to develop the uh, preperitoneal space uh, um, without any problem. You can see the linea alba uh, on the superior section of the screen and inferiorly see the drop down uh, false form uh, with the peritoneum. Uh, that's a closed xiphoid process uh, uh, to the right left side of my screen uh, in the lower portion and now I can start seeing the diaphragmatic fibers, uh, the costal margins of the diaphragmatic fibers and uh, and I've seen this like a band of uh, diaphragmatic fibers going, uh, coming off from the transverse abdominis, which I haven't seen thus before. I'm going to show it again later uh, for the time-wise. Uh, I'm going to dissect this space uh, all the way. That's a costal margin, and you see that fibers of diaphragm going off from coming off from the uh, transverse abdominis muscle. So I'm developing that space, continuing from there, I'm going towards uh, laterally and uh, caudally, uh, developing that preperitoneal space, dropping that transversalis fascia down. Uh, once I got that, uh, developed that space in the virgin planes, I'm going to go towards the uh, hernial defects itself, uh, where it's well scarred and uh, she had uh, an X lab before for a uh, sigmoid resection with the colostomy and uh, reversal eventually. So developing the preperitoneal space, uh, uh, it's quite tedious when it comes to the posterior rectus sheet separating the peritoneum uh, away, but uh, if you stay above the transverse abdominis uh, facial layer, you'll be fine. And uh, we dissect that space, uh, rotating the hernia sac medially all the way. Uh, now the, the pelvis and uh, my uh, end point of lateral dissection is once I see the uh, retroperitoneal fat, uh, then I will stop. I know, I know that for sure that uh, we got all the visceral sac uh, rotated uh, medially and uh, that will give us enough uh, peritoneal coverage. The peritoneum lays nice and flat in that area. Uh, here I am showing the fibers of the diaphragm. You can see that the costal belly, that's a belly going towards transverse abdominis and there's a belly towards the xiphoid process. That's probably the sternal portion of the diaphragm. Uh, so while I'm docked on the patient's right side, uh, I'm closing the hernial defect on the uh, left rectus muscle. Uh, 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 and now I place my trocars on the patient's left and uh, re-dock the robot and do the same thing on the pretty much follow the same steps of taking creating the preparatorial space uh, on the patient's right side now um, this time i'm doing from um, bottoms up uh, developing that uh, plane in the preparatorial space uh, nothing fancy on this side uh, pretty much the same uh, trying to not to make many holes i mean once I develop this space adequately, uh, and it just makes me realize that uh, for a defect of size about width of uh, 8 centimeters, do you necessarily need to do a 
competent separation. I mean, I did not even Botox this patient, but uh, her abdominal wall was compliant enough to get that facial closed uh, properly. So, <clears throat> again, rotate in the visceral sac uh, medially on the patient's left. Uh, once, once we have that, uh, once you see that retroperitoneal fat, uh, once I know that uh, peritoneum is nice and flat, again is the viscera i'm closing the posterior layer with the uh, uh, two ov lock suture um, uh, so i'm closing it in um, conal fashion uh, closing the defect uh, the peritoneal defect um, i had no problem in closing the peritoneum it was nice and fly without any tension uh, We want to make sure that all the peritoneal tears were closed. Uh, in fact, I had initially I ex uh, recruited partial hunial sac. I eventually end up uh, resecting that sac because uh, I didn't even need it in closing that uh, peritone posterior layer. So. See that excess uh, peritoneal sac, which hanial sac, which I end up resecting it. I didn't need it. It was quite redundant. Closing the, all the peritoneals is very important to close uh, all the peritoneal tears so that uh, the synthetic mesh uh, is not in common touch with the uh, viscera. Now I'm closing the the lineal reconstructing the linea alba plicating the honey sac to prevent the seroma um, in a venetian blind technique fashion and so I'll, i this is a wheel zero wheel lock 18 inches so i laid the sutures in uh, and uh, 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 sequentially um, tighten them up uh, it will help I mean, part of me, I feel like the robotic surgery helps in these situations because uh, the patient is paralyzed and the abdominal wall is stretched out. And uh, having that sequential uh, tightening of the same uh, muscle will help that uh, facial tense uh, effect. I placed in a 40 by 30 centimeter uh, medium weight uh, um, uh, proline mesh uh, rolled in uh, double cigar fashion and rolled out uh, one side and rolled it out on other side. It was nice and flat. Uh, it was a pretty big size mesh. I could able to push it through the 12 pro car. I placed uh, Vista seal and I placed one drain uh, because it's of the extensive dissection. Thank you for watching.